Okay, this is episode 8C. If you hear a noise in the background, it's the cicadas. They like to chirp a lot at this time. What we're looking at here is the real meaning of Genesis 5. Bishop Usher did understand, and so have a lot of people since, that Genesis 5 is important, even though it's very boring to the normal reader. But what they mistake is the kind of importance that it is. God is going to demonstrate his rules for time in Genesis 5 forward. So once you plot out the dates that he gives, and they are dates, they're measured in uh, years from the fall, when you see those dates and you plot them, you see God's rules for time. Now people used to know these rules, but in the last 2,000 years or so that information has been lost, um, probably because people stopped being interested in it. That's usually the reason why Bible is, uh, goes under, you know, misunderstood for so long. So now we're going to show what the Bible is actually saying about Genesis 5 and the rules for time because all I did is I took the Bible information and plotted it here in this worksheet named Gene Years XLS and you can see that in the top of the screen G-E-N-E-Y-R-S dot XLS and you can search on Brainout with that name and you'll get it. Now, what are the rules? Before I even get into how you use the worksheet the rules are really very simple. Somebody every 490 years of history must be super matured or time ends. Now there are really two sets of criteria but we're going to deal with the simple one first. Every 490 years of history from the fall forward this right here in cell A13 is the fall. We call it year of the world zero in the worksheet but it's measuring from the fall. Now the fall occurred in 4106 BC, which you can tell when that was when you plot the dates the Bible gives you. You have to plot them all to know this. And that's what I did. This worksheet goes all the way through 2007 AD. But just get the idea of it for now. Year zero is the year of the fall and that is 4106 BC. That's in cell uh, E14. Hope you can see the cursor very well. So the year of the world is zero at that point. Now, between that point and right here, 490, which is in cell G19, you should be able to see it on your screen in full screen. Between zero and 490, there must be somebody alive who super matures such that God will grant due to that person's super maturity in that person's name God will grant the entire world another 490 years to live if there is no such person time ends now after let's assume somebody gets granted and I'll tell you who it was in a minute once that grant occurs, then there is an additional 70-year voting window for those who have believed in God as he was then revealed to vote for maturing. They're not mature as the person who got the award, but they're voting to mature further, and there must be sufficient votes for that also, or time ends. That's the basic reason for the flood, but I'll get into that when we get into the flood. All right. The 70 years is where the sabbatical years come from in the Jewish calendar, but we're not yet at the time of the Jews, so I'll cover that when I get there. Just get the idea. First, somebody has to mature enough in, four, in a 490 year period for God to grant them, for, to grant a 490 year extension of time for the whole world to live. Secondly, if that extension has been granted some individual, and it can be granted to more than one, but it doesn't extend the time. It only makes it better. 
you know, the time is of, you know, nicer. But if at least one, then time extends. If then there are enough other people who are voting to know God during the 70 years following a 490 year period in the middle, then and only then will the next 490 years play. All right? That's the criterion. And, and now we're going to go through, well, first I'm going to go through how to use the worksheet. But this worksheet will show you the actual Bible people the Bible tells you about and these criteria and how they work. But you can't know them. You can't know this doctrine unless you plot the dates the Bible gives you. And that's why we don't know because nobody's bothered to do that. I wouldn't have bothered either, but God kicked me. I'm not going to tell you why he kicked me or how he kicked me now. Let's, let's keep to the topic. Okay, next up, let's go through how you use the worksheet to make it easier to navigate. If you put your mouse on cell A2, you will get a note. Well, you would get a note. Just a second. There is a problem. Um, all right. I'm sorry, that was a glitch with the machine. Okay, if you put your, your cursor on cell A2, see the note that suddenly appears? Okay. That tells you what I've just said about the criterion for granting time. It's a summary of this doctrine. If instead, like I just did, and caused the machine to hang up, if you were to click on the cell itself, you will download a 29-page Word doc, might be 30 pages now, a Word document that explains this whole doctrine in more detail and has other links to the other pages I wrote on the same topic so that you can examine it and vet it. Because this is not known in Christendom, you're going to have to test it. And besides, that's good for your spiritual life. Even if I were lying to you, it would be good for your spiritual life. But to prove that it's true before God, you have to vet it. Because you, 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 it's just not available anywhere else in the world. Okay? Like I said, I wouldn't know it either if God didn't kick me about it. And I might explain why God kicked me and how... Um, in a later video. Right now, just understand, put your mouse on cell A2 to see the note, click on cell A2 to download the Word doc, which has all the links in it that you need to vet this, including this worksheet. Okay, as you'll notice, if you put your mouse on a cell that's got a little red marker on it, there are little notes that tell you information that is usually pretty helpful to remind you of what it means or what have you. I have lots of those little red notes in the worksheet. Okay, the third thing I want to cover, third category, is how you can navigate the worksheet much more easily. If you click on Excel's menu, View, you get a drop-down. Go down to Custom Views, click on that, and I have made up about 20 different um, custom views that you can go to on the worksheet to different parts of time from Adam forward. And it, it's pretty helpful. It helps you navigate. For example, one of the options is to go to the 20th century. That's our time. All right. So you, you highlight that and then click Show, at which point you're taken to what's roughly the beginning of the 20th century. It starts a little farther back because the trends that characterize the 20th century really started about 50 years prior. And so here are events. I haven't logged them all in yet, obviously. Here are some major events in the 20th century which depict the trends that the Bible says occur during the last 120 years of each 490 year period in order for the voting all right. See this. This is a voting period. 
in order for a voting period to complete properly there are seven trends and those seven trends are color coded there's a migration trend there is a back to the Bible movement trend where people want to understand the word there is usually a change of some nation that was really pro-God that becomes negative and some other nation becomes pro-God at that point there's usually some big threat to civilization um, there are seven total trends and you can find them um, the little notes here that tell you about this you can find these trends by looking at the notes and it, they'll explain to you what the trends are okay I'm just showing you you can't see all of this very clearly in the window now but you can see something of the nature of these little notes okay so now let's get into um, back to the, the meaning of the doctrine again a person must be super mature by the end of every 490 year period uh, beginning from Adam's fall and the Bible tracks who these people are if such a person did not exist time would end this is the precedence for the rapture basically the rapture goes back to the time rules that applied pre-Israel from Adam forward and I'm going to get into that when we get into the Israel section now the whole reason why this is true time is contingent it must be granted you can't take it for granted the reason why this is true is that we are in a trial God there's the trial is about whether or not God was fair to sentence Satan and the fallen angels to the lake of fire that's in Matthew 25 41 that was the sentence then but Satan appealed it so man is created to resolve that appeal the idea being that if lower creatures then the angels vote for God then the trial against Satan the judgment against Satan is just Satan almost won in the garden and that that was when he got the woman and Adam to both eat from the fruit but the Lord came along and said you know got them to admit that they ate and they accepted um, salvation now that is in Genesis 3 uh, 15 through 22 which we just saw in the earlier episode of uh, 8a and 8b and 7 latter part of 7 so as a result of that what would have been a victory for Satan is now a defeat because there are now going to be other human beings who are voting and it isn't really a mass vote it's a quality of voting that's why one of the criterion criteria is that somebody must super mature by the end of a 490 year unit of time in order for the next 490 year unit to play now there is a second criterion about time grants that also must be met which has to do with a thousand years if you look down in row 26 here you'll notice that the thousand years are marked in green versus the uh, 490 year benchmark which are marked in gold so therefore there must be two kinds of maturing um, believers and the same person can get both grants there must be at least one who gets a 490 year grant otherwise there won't be a civilization 1000 but there also must be someone who gets a 1000 year grant and it can be the same person and as you're going to see um, oftentimes it was the same person who got a 490 year grant also was so mature he was mature enough for a thousand year grant and therefore time was allowed to continue now the reason why this is true is because this is about votes for God it is not like our modern democracy concept of majority rules it is a per person vote and the quality that results from that vote is used in the trial that's why as you're going to see later Noah was just one guy out of the whole world I mean him and the other seven people in his family but it was really Noah 
Noah voted so strongly for God, was so super mature, that his family was saved, the other seven people, and the rest of the world was drowned. They all voted negative. So it's not majority rules, it's quality rules. Christ is only one person paid for all the sins of the world. It's the quality of your thinking that governs, not how many. Obviously, the more people are thinking highly, the better the world, you know, the more prosperity comes to the world. But in order for it to continue, there must be at least one, and the quality of thinking must be high enough. Okay, now let's go through who these people are, which will simultaneously show you how the worksheet tracks them. The first person granted uh, a 490-year unit is Adam. Now, he was granted it in the 130th year after he fell. So the cursor is now on cell G14 to demonstrate that. When a person gets a grant like this, it is commemorated by a birth of a son. The son to carry on the name, the name leading to the Messiah. Seth is that son. Seth means appointed, appointed to carry the name, really. Also appointed to replace Cain and Abel. So Seth's birth is the sign that the Bible gives you, and you, they, this was commonly understood back then, um, of, the, of Adam getting the time grant. Now the other way that you know this is that the next person who got the time grant is Jared, and that's in um, cell G22. These people who are granted the time grants are in light blue in the worksheet. Now, the reason why you know that is that there are 490 years between 622 and 130. It's really 492 years, but um, the birth of Seth happens early in the year, and the birth of Enoch, see, 622, commemorating the award, the birth of Enoch happens late in the year. So it ends up mathematically counting as if there were two extra years. But it's a 490 year grant. Enoch obviously was the third person to get the grant. And because God took him, I mean, he's, Hanukkah comes from his name, by the way. Hanuk is really more how you'd pronounce his name. Okay, he dies. Um, in 987th year from Adam, well he doesn't actually die rather, God just takes him home. So you know he got a grant. Okay, his kid is born in 687, which is probably the year Enoch got the grant. There is a second grant that Methuselah himself gets, alright, and it, it's probably in 874 the 874th year from Adam. So there's an overlap between um, the time grant with Enoch and the time grant with Methuselah. The other possibility is that Methuselah got two grants, but it's more likely to say that Enoch had a grant and Methuselah had a grant. You can, you can call it either way, I suppose. Okay. Now, the next person to get a grant is Noah. And that's real important. Okay, Methuselah's grant continues beyond his death. He dies in the 1656th year from Adam's fall, which in our terms is 2450 BC. All right? Now, the grant to Noah, no, I'm sorry, the grant to Noah occurs before that, before that deadline. See, the grant is going to end in 1656. In 1656, um, Shem is going to have a kid, really at the end of the year, because um, the flood lasted a year, so it's just after the flood that uh, Shem's kid is born. That's our pox side. See all these gray cells? I'm tracking the grant, the time grant, by using the gray cells because this is when the flood occurred. All right, now Noah is the guy to carry it from 1550, year 1556 after Adam, which in our 
terms is 21, I'm sorry, that's when he died, uh, 1556 from Adam, and that's real important to know because you're gonna, there's a big tie between him and Noah coming up. All right, so it passes from Methuselah to Noah. And in 1556, commemorated by Shem's birth in 1556, when Noah was almost 501 years old, that is the covenant. We know Noah more boldly because Noah got a covenant. He also got a son in the same year. I, I think he had triplets going by the Bible's wording. But Shem is definitely the one in, in question. Of course, Shem means the name. Again, carrying on the name. Now, from Noah, this is where it really gets interesting. Notice this. Noah, 1556. Shem born, 1556. Come down here to row 47 and look in H47 and you'll see that in 1556, the, the 490 years runs out in 2046 from Adam's fall. And that is the exact same year that Abraham gets his covenant, his 490 year time grant. And that too is represented by a birth of a son, in this case Isaac. You see there's a pattern. And God's doing it through the Rye method of sonship because what, what does this mean? Sons. Christ is the Son. So God's using sons. Time grants so that there will be sons. Time grants so that the sons of the earth can go on living. See the word play? And that's why God does it this way. Okay. <clears throat> so in 2046 from Adam, which is our 2060 B.C., Noah's personal 490 year time grant runs out and just in time Abraham gets it and to commemorate Abraham's getting it again as true since Adam there is the birth of a son in the year that the time grant is given Now I want to show a wrinkle in this before going further this is the end of a 490 year period of history but this is the year that, in this case, Adam got his 490-year time grant. So here, with Jared, is 490 years after here with Adam. Notice that here, 6, 622 from Adam, is greater than 490 from Adam. So because Adam, when Adam got his time grant, it goes beyond the 490 year deadline. It's a 490 year grant that goes past the 490 year deadline. So you are tracking, the Bible is tracking two kinds of deadlines. This 490 year deadline, for example, in row, the gold row in row 19, is historical. It's an absolute. Somebody must mature within that time. However, if someone does, the actual measurement of protection or time that the world gets to go on can be greater than the 490 year deadline in this case Adam got his in the year 130 after his fall it lasted until 622 really because of the early year and late year birth of the sons and Jared got his at that point okay you have to give or take six months because um, you know it's happening in the same year so therefore it qualifies now Jared gets his in 622 so now you'd want to add 490 years to that which would take us what roughly to um, uh, tw uh, 1022 1012 so that's putting us in the voting window so the world had and had time through um, 10,012 to for somebody to mature after Jared. And of course, we had Enoch doing that, and we had Methuselah doing that. So it was a shoe in for 2012 to occur. All right, but notice people went real negative in this voting window. Real negative. Because in 1656, 
there's the flood. So if they're negative in the voting window, but you have a time grant that's extending, like in this case, farther than the voting window, well, into it really, but we have Methuselah that's going all the way to 1656, time is allowed to continue until the time grant ends. And if the voting doesn't improve by then, then God pronounces. Now, if you look in Genesis 6, you'll see him do that. He says, okay, guys, you got another 120 years left to go. All right, that's, that's the combination of the 70-year voting window and another voting window for 50 years for the world, which I haven't yet discussed. That's where the 120 comes from. That's where the sabbatical years and jubilee comes from in the Jewish law. They are continuations of prior rules of time. That's why those rules are there in the Jewish law. Okay. So 120 years prior to 1656 was 1536 from Adam. 1536 from Adam. Okay, that's right here. Now, Noah was still alive, and Noah was voting positive. So during the 120 years, from 1536 to 1656, see, from here to here, there's another voting period that occurs of 70 years between 1540 from Adam and 1610 from Adam. And during that voting period, marked with light blue lines, okay, look striped blue, and hopefully you can see it well in your worksheet, Noah supermatured in 1556, right in the middle. And that's why there was enough of a vote so that 1656 could still happen, but the human race was not destroyed. And again, that's commemorated with the birth of Shem, occurring during the voting window, and obviously between 1556 and 1610, when the voting win window ends, Shem had supermatured, and uh, so Shem hadn't supermatured necessarily, but Shem had voted for God, and so did the wife and the other husbands and wives, so that eight people got into the ark at the flood in 1656 from Adam. Okay? And again, that was about our 2450 B.C., which you can slightly confirm if you look at ex even with, from extra-biblical sources because, like, the Epic of Gilgamesh and stuff like that is around that time period. You know, you have to always um, take the uh, dating that archaeology gives you with huge pounds of salt because... They don't take into account that C-14 is leached away by water. So they'll think it's earlier or later than it is, depending on how much how waterlogged the item that they're dating is. Okay, so that brings us again to the, the concept that, okay, we've gone beyond the deadline because Methuselah's ended in 1656 right here, but Noah supermatured here in 1556 from the fall. And because he did, then we got a further time extension. The flood could occur, but not destroy the human race. That's the story God's telling you with all these numbers. But we're so bored with the numbers, we don't, we don't plot them to find out what he tells you. So that's why we don't know this. It's the only reason why we don't know. Because all this information is actually in the Bible. That's where I got it from. I didn't get this from another source. Okay. Now, tracking for O. Before I get, get past Shem and, and to Abraham again, I want to explain something about the 1,000. Civilization 1,000, a thousand year time grant had to be given somebody in order for time to continue after a thousand years. Um, I'm not 100% sure at what year, but I am sure that Enoch got the thousand year time grant. Enoch got it. He had to. Now, it might have been somebody else besides Enoch, but Enoch was considered the, one of the highest person, well, the highest person in the Old Testament, because he didn't even die. So he had to have gotten that thousand-year grant. So Enoch's thousand-year grant, beginning, you know, at whatever point it was, certainly went beyond the year 1050. Now, between 1000 and 1050 is another voting window. In this particular voting window, people were so negative that the flood is going to end up happening 
about a hundred years, well, yeah, a hundred years after Noah gets his covenant. So this was the voting window for the world. That's signified in Jewish terms by Jubilee. And Jubilee always signifies the end of time. Always. Jubilee is what happens when Messiah returns to earth. It's in Isaiah 61. And Christ cited it when he uh, announced his ministry. So if you want to just read ahead into um, Isaiah 61 to understand what Jubilee means. And we're going to get into it more later, but I just, the preview of coming attractions, okay? The voting window for the world. If not enough people are believing in Christ as he was then revealed, then the world ends, at least for those who are voting against God. And that's why you had the flood.